Hi there, I'm Christine McFall. I've been school nursing now for about 18 years, and I thought I would share with you just a few of my little tips and hacks that I have picked up over the years doing this job. So this is my office, as you can tell. Um, I have a couple of chairs over there that I visit with parents and sometimes students, and I also do some of my screening there when I'm using my audiometer. Over here, I keep my notebooks that I use almost on a daily basis, sometimes on a weekly basis. One of the things that um, almost all school nurses need to have is something that they can go to as a reference book for individual health care plans. You can also have one of these um, on your computer, but I guess I'm old and I like the books. Um, another manual that I find really helpful is the DSM. This has some criteria for different behavioral health types of diagnoses that a lot of our students come to school with and we want to find out what the criteria is for that diagnosis or when they come with a diagnosis we can just kind of like look it up and find out um, some more information on that. Uh, what else we have here is a notebook and I have, have designed my covers for my own notebooks. This just happens to be some stuff from Florence Nightingale on the front of that one. But this one here is about individual health care plans and IEPs. So all of my kids who have a health care plan um, or an emergency evacuation plan, I just have them listed right in here. And also we have a lot of individual education plans that go with these kids and a lot of um, meetings that go with these kids. So I have a little calendar right here also listed that's a quick reference for me. The next book I have is my delegation and training book right there and this cover says training and every time I train a staff member on a, a particular procedure that they might be doing with a student such as um, inhalers or EpiPens I need to make sure that they can pass the skills checklist and um, I, I update their planning on an annual basis. This notebook is frequently used forms. So, Things that I give out, like maybe um, asthma action forms or seizure management forms or uh, like everyday scheduled medication forms such as an ADHD med. These forms that I grab all the time, I keep right here in this notebook. Um, and then also my health assistant knows where to find all these forms too. If I'm not in the office, she knows exactly where to find that. Of course, we also have it on the computer. We can print it out, but this one's kind of handy dandy and quicker. Right here, this is basically a portfolio. It says a school nurse evaluation. Um, and this was required of us a few years ago with one of our nurse managers. So at first, we all didn't want to take on one more project or one more job, but it is actually really nice because you keep all your continuing education um, credits in here, copies of all your licenses in here, any in-services that you do for staff in here. Um, basically, it's a nice portfolio of all the work that you do, and it also helps you keep your curriculum vitae or your resume updated when you have a portfolio like this going on. This right here, it's called the Sub-Nurse Notebook. So just in case someday if I were ever to get killed in the car on the way to work and somebody has to cover and, and rescue this job and take over for me, hopefully they can find all the information they need in this notebook as far as what time our school opens and closes, um, also emergency contact numbers around, that type of stuff. Um, and the criteria for the school that you work for, um, like I work for APS, they kind of dictate a lot of the information that's in here, basically about maybe our computer systems. So that is all the information that I have as far as notebooks that I keep handy and use real frequently. The next thing I have here is my file system. Most nurses, when we work in a clinical setting, either in an inpatient setting or even maybe in an outpatient clinic setting, we may not have to do a lot of the clerical work. We're doing hands-on with patients. When you come into the school setting, you are doing a whole lot of clerical work. You're doing more time on the computer and more time on the phone, um, interacting with parents and community on a more active basis. So you have to learn how to manage an office pretty effectively. So one of the things that we have here is we have all of our kids in here that come to our school, they all have a health file. Now there's a cumulative file that's kept somewhere else that has their educational records in it. But this is their shot records. This also has screening information and any relevant health information I may have on that child. So what we end up doing is every year when the kindergartners start, we start a file for them. Next year, kindergartners will all be in a green folder. Um, this year, kindergartners are all in a manila folder and they have this, this uh, label up here is highlighted yellow. So when, I, when they progress to the next year, this means all of my 
by yellow labeled kindergartners will now be first graders, and the first graders will have the yellow labels, and my new kindergartners will have green charts. Now this helps with keeping everything safe, I'm not safe, um, organized because sometimes when you get a little bit rushed and you're trying to refile something, it kind of helps you remember, oh yeah, they're a first grader, oh yeah, they're a second grader, I can tell by the color of their chart. So if you have another program in your school um, that's a special needs population that you're addressing, sometimes you might want to keep those folders separate, and I have that somewhere else down here. So this particular drawer, I have K, which is kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade, and then the second drawer is my special needs program right in the front, and then I have fourth grade and fifth grade. And as you can tell, the longer they're in here, the more papers they get in their folder, so therefore this takes a little more time. Um, and if you're not real familiar with different kinds of folders and files and you want to order some good supplies, make sure you get the fat bottom folders. So there's normal hanging, there's normal hanging folders, but you can also get these kind um, that are wide on the bottom. And what makes them a little bit different is there's this cardboard insert that pops in the bottom. So you can get these at any office supply place, um, such as Sandia Office Supply or one of those competitors out there. But that's who um, our school particularly uses. It, it kind of depends on who your school has a contract with. Um, as far as other good references, you might want to become a member of the National Association of School Nurses and then also pursue your certification in school nursing because you're going to need those resources. You'll also get a manual, or I should say manual, you'll get like um, a journal on a regular basis that has topics that are important to school nursing and that's kind of what these two things are. So I don't always get them read on time, but at least I can kind of like cruise through them and become a little bit familiar with the articles that are in there and I can go back and reference those. And when I get a new mentor, or I'm sorry to say, when I get a new mentee, because I'm the mentor, um, I like to hand these journals to them just so they get a little more familiar with what the role of the school nurse is because it's so vastly different than any other kind of nursing um, we may have been exposed to before. This little handy dandy something as we just made a couple weeks ago, if any time I step out of the office and we lock our door outside, I go ahead and I put this out there. This is sort of a caricature of a younger me. <laughs> and so they all know just to go to the front and I usually have a walkie-talkie walkie with me or my cell phone with me so they can go ahead and call me. My cell phone um, is wonderful. Everybody has a smartphone nowadays. And I set my timer on my cell phone for kids who have medicine on a regular basis. But this is just a little reminder because a lot of times I either get too absorbed in doing something here on a project or else I get a lot of interruptions. So by making sure I have a timer set, I know my children that have a scheduled procedure or a scheduled medication will get that medication pretty much on time. Okay, so let me give you a little more of a tour of this nurse's office that we have here. Over in the corner is my lice lamp. And um, every now and then we will get some lice happening in the school system. And um, the PTO helped buy this lamp for me and it magnifies everything. So my eyes have gotten a little bit older, and so have my health assistants. So we wear bifocals and progressive lenses now. So now I can put their head underneath here and start separating. By the way, I use a Q-tip when I'm separating here. Um, and I get through and I look for the lice and the nits, and we kind of go from there. So I love my lice lamp. Um, over here, we keep a little calendar with reminders. This, uh, we kind of cleaned it up for today, but a lot of times if we have kids going on field trips, I mean classes going on field trips, we'll have that up here. If we have spring break coming up, we'll have this up here. If we know we're going to be closed or there's any other special event going on, we try to get this posted up here on our calendar. This is just a little outline that I thought I would cover today, and let me look and see what I've missed so far. Oh, I know what I forgot. That is our send and receive notebooks. We have two notebooks, and the health assistant really takes care of all of this uh, for me, but... Um, but I'm familiar with them enough to know how to work them. This is just the health um, folders that we send and receive, so it's really important that you document this because a lot of our students go from one school to another school to another school and trying to keep track of where their records might be can get really complicated. And the other folder right here, this is our class list needs. Um, frequently when kids start kindergarten, we find that either we don't understand what they're saying or they actually don't know what their last name is. Um, and they can't remember their teachers' names, 
So sometimes we can kind of keep questioning them until we finally figure out what their last name is and who their teacher is and where we need to send them back to once we get them treated. Alrighty, over here we have um, our cots for kids to take a break. We have nice little divider curtains hanging out over here. So um, sometimes we will separate and let them have a little bit of privacy and a little bit of downtime. Um, sometimes it's also beneficial, I can't say it, beneficial for kids who think that they need a little more attention than they need. So sometimes we're like, yeah, why don't you go over here and rest? And we kind of like close that nice little curtain and after a while they get bored with hanging out with us and they're suddenly well and they want to go back to class. Over here is our freezer that we have a whole lot of ice bags usually made up. We're getting ready for spring break, so we're not stocking the freezer right now. We're planning on defrosting this in a little bit. And then under here we just have um, like some nourishments for some of our children. This area over here, we have a caddy. Um, so my health assistant, Sylvia, and I kind of designed using this for things that we use every day, all day long. So we have our thermometer here. We have the otoscope. We have, um, really, we have three different thermometers. One's in my office. But we have the oral, we have the temporal, and then I also have the one for the, the tympanic one that's in my office. We have our tongue depressors that we use for everything. Um, um, and then we also have things like our Vaseline. Uh, we use this quite a bit for chapped lips. Then we also just have a little bit of hand cream, emollient hand cream, uh, for certain kids who just may have some dry skin and need some of that. Of course, bandage, scissors, and pins. Our medication notebook is right over here. And I'll show you a quick hack that we use with our medications in a little bit, too, here at school. This is the inside of a drawer. Um, we like keeping things organized. So this is the typical stuff you'll find in a health room drawer. You've got your straight pins, your safety pins. You have things for trimming fingernails and um, tweezers. We have the tape for helping out with putting dressings on. I've actually had to use this ring cutter one time in 17 years, but boy, it was really nice. Uh, we have sewing kits in here also, so we have that. Glass repair kits. Um, kids always need their little screws kind of tightened up on their glasses, so we have that here also. Of course, we have some alcohol swabs there. And this drawer here, um, these things are great if you can get some dentists to donate these to you. So kids are always losing their teeth in elementary school. So they come in with their little bloody tooth and we want them to just kind of hold a little pressure on, their, on that little area for a little bit. And then we'll have them rinse with some warm salt water. But these are really nice. We also have some two by twos and some wrap over here, different kinds of tape. Um, we also even have some butterflies in here. So for sometimes we might want to like hold something together and uh, we'll have some butterflies. But it's kind of a mash unit and we work with what we get and go through it all pretty darn quickly. Over here in these drawers, we just have some additional supplies like thermometer covers. Up here we have some of our um, just basic over-the-counter kinds of meds like ibuprofen for kids and then other meds that are controlled substances. We have those double locked and stored in another area that I won't show you. <laughs> over here in this area, kids that go on field trips we have um, all of their emergency medications right here. So I have two different bins. I have them labeled K through 2 and then 3 through 5. So I'm able to just grab this when they're going on a field trip and throw it in the backpack. We have a couple of different backpacks because kids are always going on field trips. So we redo a little bit of training with the teacher before they head out on that field trip. And we give them the backpack. Let me show you what we keep in it. So. The first thing we would put in these backpacks is the medications that I just showed you. Those are things typically like EpiPens and inhalers. That is something we would stick in here. We also have some of this good stuff. This is like if you need to wash up a little owie or a little boo-boo or an abrasion, you've got that. We can wash it that way. Inside of here, we also put some Kleenexes and some gloves. Kleenexes. Here's some gloves. Um, we have some cotton balls, we have a small first aid kit, believe it or not we even have a thermometer in here and we also have some additional band-aids. Um, so teachers, depending on where they're going, sometimes they'll even add a bottle of water or something like that to this part here. When it comes to routine screening here in the nurse's office, um, my health assistant and I, we kind of do a team approach where I do the most of the screening while she's doing the documentation. So she has the record of the child in her hand and she's documenting what I'm um, uh, doing on that student so we keep things really accurate. 
and we typically do our screenings about four or five students at a time and we'll do one class a day. So when I'm working with a kindergarten class, for example, I'll meet with those teachers the week before. I'll tell the teachers that if you want to, they'll divide them up by committee. So they'll send one committee at a time and their committees are usually divided like in a little table. So there'll be a little committee of four or a committee of six or something like that. Because it works with the, the teacher system and also that size is manageable for us to do when we're doing our screenings. Um, right here we have our vision box. And this one is set for the letters right there. This is the Snell and I chart. Um, and then for the kids, we'll have shapes. And let me see if I can find the shapes here for you. I can't get them out. They're stuck. But the shapes are something that's shaped like a, an apple, a house, a, um, a square, and a circle. Sometimes you'll get kids who do not know their shapes. Um, and that's more frequent than I anticipated. And for those particular kids, what will end up happening is whoever's assisting me will just have them point to the shape that they're knowing. So they may not know that this is called a circle, but they can definitely point to the circle if that's what I'm pointing to over there on the board. We keep our scale back here in the bathroom so we, we can weigh these kids privately. Some kids are very self-conscious, especially when they start getting a little bit older about their weight. So we have our scale right over here. Also in our bathroom, we have another caddy made up, and we teach kids to take care of their injuries when they start coming to school. So we'll talk them through the steps of cleaning up an abrasion or a cut or, or whatever they're doing. Um, and then we kind of help them dry it and get that done. And by the time um, they've been in here a few times and have done that, they start to become a lot more independent and pretty proud of themselves. And they'll even help their friends get their little owies and boo-boos kind of taken care of. Okay. Let me go over here to our board and see what I've covered and what I forgot to cover so far. We talked about the file system. We talked about my notebooks. We talked about the class list notebook and also the send and receive notebooks. We talked about becoming NASA, uh, being a member of NASA, National Association of School Nurses, and also um, becoming certified in school nursing. Sometimes when you get a certification, it also increases your pay, depending on which school district you work for. Um, but definitely, if you have a master's, that should also increase your pay. Um, I also bookmark frequently used websites on my computer and those sites for, for me here in Albuquerque would be New Mexico um, uh, Department of Health, APS.edu, and then there's also a program called NIMSIS, which is our immunization system that we reference all the time looking for kids' immunizations. Um, when it comes to documentation, we document all visits into the nurse's office. Even if it's super duper minor, we put it in there because sometimes what happens is the story that gets home to the parent is not actually what happened when they came to school. So we need to make sure that all visits are documented in, in the computer. Also, all head injuries, we call the parents on that. We make our best effort to make uh, contact with parents. Uh, that's for a couple reasons. One of them is we're never there to quite witness that head injury. So sometimes what we think might be minor could have been something more significant. So we want to make sure the parents are definitely following up on any kind of head bump or injury. Um, the next thing is our health room passes. We have two ways of doing it here at our school, John Baker. One is a written pass, and the teacher will fill that out. We'll complete that, and then a copy will go home to the parent. And that's really um, what happens for the majority of our visits that are pretty darn minor. Um, they're just coming in here for a Band-Aid. Um, sometimes parents are out on, or um, teachers are out on duty and they don't have passes with them and they'll just send the kid with a clip. This is what our, um, our health room passes look like. It says parent notification. So if the parent maybe didn't get the voicemail message that we left and they'll see this note. Um, and then the um, other thing that we have is just nothing but like a clothespin, that's a wooden clothespin. And so if our teachers don't happen to have the piece of paper, then they'll just send them with this, and it says nurse on it. And so these will, they'll have these out there on their duty vest, and the kids will walk in with one of these. Um, so that's how we use our passes. We make sure that they do have it. Our most frequent visitors are kids who have headaches, stomach aches, sore throats, um, cough, or they're just requesting ice. So how do we assess and how do we treat those things? The majority of headaches and stomach aches that we have, um, I'm not really sure of the cause. Um, of those, but this is what we do for most headaches. We take a temperature and assess them and see if there's any other illness kind of that might be contributing to that. 
Um, and if they don't have a fever, we have them drink a lot of water. We talked about how important it is to stay hydrated at school. And then we have them come back later on and check and see how their headache's doing. And sometimes we'll spy on them a little bit during the day or just check in with their teacher and find out how that's going. As far as stomach aches go, um, a frequent cause of stomach aches is basically constipation. So we try to have the, the student go to the bathroom and sit there for a little while and see if they can have any results that way. Um, and we also do a temperature check and we, we kind of assess the behavior, how they're doing with their stomach ache. And if there's no nausea or no vomiting, there's no diarrhea, nothing that I'm worried about as far as um, it being an acute situation that they need to go to a doctor for, we pretty much keep our stomach ache kids here um, in school too, if, if we can. Uh, sore throats, we assess the throat, we take the temperature, um, gargle with warm salt water quite frequently. We call a parent if there's something that is maybe really causing them some distress um, and, and real legitimate pain and see if the parent can maybe bring them something that would uh, provide some comfort. Cough, we love honey. We give honey out for everybody that's got a cough. So when they come in here coughing, we'll do that. We, um, if they're diabetic, if they're diabetic, if they have asthma um, or something underlying, we're definitely going to do further assessment. And if they need their inhaler or something like that, we'll we'll treat that. But this year has been quite the year for coughs. We've had a lot of coughs. Um, the request for eyes. That's one of those that you need to have some kind of control on. As a school nurse, kids love eyes. They love going back to class with eyes. So one of our rules here is if you get eyes, you usually sit in the health room and hold your eyes for your five to 10 minutes, and then you go back. Especially if there is no visible injury, meaning there's no redness, there's no swelling, there's no palpable pain. It's just one of those, um, 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 the rubber ball hit my thigh, I think I need ice. Well, we don't want them going back to class and, and being a distractor with the ice. Um, and sometimes they request ice for all kinds of stuff. The other day someone came in with a loose tooth and wanted ice and I had to say, no, we don't do ice for loose teeth. So you'll get lots of ice requests. Um, when it comes to the kids who come in very frequently, sometimes we nick nickname them the frequent flyers, um, always try to find out what the underlying cause is and just get to visit with those kids and find out what possibly may be stressing them out either at home or at school, or if there really is something medical that's going on with that child that needs to be addressed. Um, and usually after a, a few visits, once you get to know that child and build some rapport and some trust with them, you might be able to figure out what really is one of the causes of that. Um, I'm trying to think what else I may have forgotten. Oh, I know what's important, is make sure you have access to the school schedule. So you need to know when that child um, or that grade is going to lunch, when their recesses are, all that kind of good stuff. You're trying to find somebody for some medicine that they forgot to take, or maybe a parent's coming to pick them up and you're trying to locate that child. So make sure you know how to access that schedule. We actually have it posted over there where uh, the health assistant sits, so she has that real easy. I have one in my notebook, and I can also use my secretaries as a resource. Um, I think I have gone over everything. Oh, except for one thing. Okay, you're gonna have some emergency drills. Um, so there, there'll be fire drills, I call them, or they'll have lockdowns and things like that. So know what your school's policy is on that. I have a really nice emergency backpack that's loaded with everything. So this particular backpack that I grab here, ugh, this one right here, I have an emergency list of all my, my students and their health conditions right here. Then I also have in here everything from a pin light. I have a little bit of suction, like bulb suction in here. I have bandages, um, all types of that type of stuff. So that's right here. Love it. Use it every time the fire drill goes on. If um, you're going to, if it's not just a drill or you're going to be out there for quite a while, you're going to need to also make sure you take all your rescue medications that are in here. So that's pretty easy. You just have to grab both of those bins and head out the door with that. Okay, two quick hacks that I do. One of them is if you have students who are all taking their medicine around the same time, which we do this year, we have five students all coming in right around 12 o'clock. One of the things I like to do is make sure they all have their own individual cup. I'll write their name on the outside of it. So all they have to do is just identify themselves. Like my name is Harry, I've got Harry's cup. I have Harry's medicine inside of that. And that way it's a nice double check that they've all had their medicine. The cup is, is also one of those things where the kid can also double check that that's the right pill, that's the right cup. One more safety measure so you don't have any med errors if they're all coming in at one time. The last thing I wanted to show you is my favorite little hack, 
and it's called the t-shirt sling. We used to use those big triangle bandages and slide them underneath until one day I saw this little trick on YouTube. And so we have done this. We get probably at least two broken arms a year. Um, so when we found this quick little hack, it has made life so much more comfortable for the students who injure their arms and they have to go for x-rays. Okay, we're getting it right now, our t-shirt. Ta-da, this'll work, okay. So anyway, most, most, uh, most health rooms have a bunch of excess t-shirts for something. And this is little, so I hope it fits over my big head. Yes, it did. We got it over the head. Um, and it really doesn't matter too much the size of it. But all you need to do with this is put the head through the neck hole. And then you're just going to put the arm right in here and like this. And it holds the arm right next to where it needs to be. Of course, this is little because it's a student's, but as you can tell, it's just perfect. Um, and then also, if it's too big for the child, it's pretty easy to go ahead and adjust and pin because um, we had to do that one time when I put the wrong size t-shirt on. I was like, oh, we got it on. We'll figure it out, and, and we did. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Everybody liked it. Um, and a lot of times, if you have old, dirty t-shirts, and when they get there, they can just cut it off instead of having to pull it back over their arm or their head, I mean. That's it. Those are all my tips. I hope it helps you out and uh, welcome to school nursing or if you've been a school nurse for a long time, maybe you have some other tips and hacks that you want to share with people who are new to school nursing. Thanks. Have a good day.